Got a couple of people here, looks like. Let's hear from you. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Roxanne's here. That's uh, the second note. Let me see if you're first or not. Oh, let's go. Cynthia's first, Cynthia Cronin. What's going on? We're live, we're live, we're live. We got a beautiful, sunny, crisp, cool day, 50 degrees in Chicago. All right, you're ready. Hello, everyone. Six, six Semper, Marie Brown, Kelly, here they come. Here comes the gang. I was wondering. I thought I lost you guys. Guess what? So far, knock on. Wait, we got to go to a tree and knock on wood here. But there's no gremlins today. Everything's like working. The screen is horizontal. I'm on my gimbal. So we don't have the shaky hands, Ron. But I'm going to knock on wood. So we don't want any issues. All right, what's up? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna talk about today? Mesa, Arizona, that's awesome. Hello from Georgia, Chris says. Greg's here, Greg Flatten. Thomas from Idaho, very cool. Howdy, Desmond, is it? All right, here they come. They're coming in force. I love it. We've got 163 people already. You guys are awesome. Well, we're going to be walking a really interesting cemetery today. Very old, very desolate. I think I saw it. It's a massive cemetery. I'm not going to say where I'm at, and you don't have to try and guess, but it is... It's a massive old German cemetery. Hey, from New York, NC, North Carolina, right? I'm gonna be in North Carolina, South Carolina, Atlanta, all of that this winter. And I'll do a little road trip, see you guys. All right, Gene and Kim, Foxy Wolf. Oh, I love that moniker. Foxy Wolf, that's a good name. Yeah, we're at, uh, so what? we're not gonna see any pictures today. Well, we might. If we see two or three, we're gonna be really lucky because this is mostly German. I did a story here. I did a story here last week, a really cold, windy day. But I got it in of a German woman who was killed in, it was a suggestion from one of the viewers who was killed in a laundromat explosion a boiler explosion back in the i think it was the early 1900s she was young and her sister was about to pick her up but she was late and because her sister was late she got killed so i'll probably put that out in a couple of weeks are you guys ready to uh start moving put a move on here instead of looking at my mug all right kelly says yeah i know it's a bad deal all right, let's, uh, Durwood's in the house. I, we were waiting for Durwood. Durwood, we were waiting for you. So now we can begin. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving us your audience. All right, here we are. I'm behind this shadowy tree hiding. Goldie Pep, it is a lovely day. It's crisp, it's cool. I don't think I need gloves. We don't have any don't have any technical issues yet. I'm just gonna go mosey around. Take a look, this is a really cool place. A lot of cool statuary here. Hey, Tommy the Cat, what's going on? Yeah, we got a good picture today. We have a good signal. I think we're gonna be good. I think that because I put in uh, my dues last week on a really cruddy, cruddy cruddy day maybe it was the weather I don't know maybe it was the weather maybe that's why dusty rusty musty guys dusty rusty has been with us I think since I was a hundred subscribers right dusty maybe 500 I don't know you were one of my first subscribers so cool to see he's still with me here Tommy Hilton, hello from Indiana. Serenity Sue's in the house, somebody said. 
I missed your Sue. Sorry, I missed your live. I was on the way here doing a bunch of other stuff. Everybody check out Serenity Sue, Wexford, Ireland. Good stuff. We're gonna be just looking at um, no, I can't I can't say where I'm at. Uh, we're getting I uh, just don't want to say where I'm at. So let's I'll tell you where I'm at after I get home. I will put all the information on here. Thank you, Greg, for the five bucks. Thank you. So I'll tell you this, it's a German cemetery. It's very, very old. It's in Chicago. And there's a lot of cool stones here. We're not gonna see pictures today. Thank you, Thomas, five bucks. We're not gonna see pictures, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna try to focus a little more on you guys in the chat, do the best I can. Talk about some stuff. What do you think? Sheila Bach, beautiful. Larry's, Larry's in the house, five bucks. Thanks, Larry. Hope you've got your sweatshirt going. I got mine on. I got mine on underneath a, a hunting sweater. I'll show you my little outfit here. So I got my, uh, I got my, I got my face is forgotten, keeping me warm. Thank you, Kim, for the $5. Let's check out this mausoleum. What do you think? Hopefully the wind's, actually the wind's not too bad. We're gonna catch a little wind. Boy, I can't, hold on. You should, you could tell us where you are, end of the show for dramatic effect. Yeah, when I get to the car, how's that? Two bucks from Beverly Alvarado. I can't see your last name. Why do they do $1.99? Why don't you just say two bucks? I don't know. All right, what do we got here? A mausoleum. Now, I don't think that's German. Is that more, what's Johnson? Swedish, right, or Norwegian? But this is mostly, did I go hunting this year? No, I really don't hunt. I hunt birds, but not that much. I haven't had time this year. Let's see what we got here. Da -da 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 -da. You guys in there okay? Yeah, oh, you'll focus. There you go. I can't read it, but you guys can. Land of the Sleeping Giant. This is, uh, this looks like some new doors here. Maybe not. Mega Bad Girl, 10 bucks, thank you. And Beverly is in for five bucks, thank you. Oh, uh, great news on the money. The money's adding up. We're saving the money. And spending the money, we've got, Britain was out, remember Britain guys from the Aleister Crowley trilogy? Britain was at, with his daughter, his beautiful daughter at Bohemian National today. And they went to visit little Willie Novotny and he tells me, sent me a picture that the, the stone is not there, but the, the foundation is put in. It's supposed to come any day. I can't wait to get out there and show you guys. He's a little boy who was the last victim found in the Eastland disaster. Money is meant to be spent. Yes, I don't take a penny of it for the channel. You know, the channel support, they say, oh, this is a, thanks for supporting the channel. And then they, I mean, come on, what does it take to, what does it take to run a channel? It's your time. So people are just, well, I guess you can pay for gas, right? Isn't that a cool statue? Look at that. No, I don't want to get on top of people, but come on, the money, this, we, we're spending the money on gravestones, every dime of it, every penny of it. How do you like all these monuments? Let's keep our eye out for a picture. Did you guys like the... I, I, I'm going to start like every day or every other day putting out the images of the post-mortem. And some of them you may have seen. Most I don't think you have seen because this book I have, it's kind of hard to get. It might be on that site. Thanks, Rose, for the 10 bucks. 
Marilyn Monroe needs to send money. Well, we have the links in the description boxes, not on this one, but on the other ones. PayPal, Patreon. I mean, you don't want to do Patreon. Most people, that's like a big commitment. And that's cool. But, you know, this always, every time, when I did Halloween, we did Halloween at our house. We had this statue in foam look just like this. And I called that Resurrection Mary. I said, it's Resurrection Mary. See this. Maynard Robin likes the postmortem. So let me throw something at you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna keep putting those out. The books I'm getting those from, I have to, to buy, one book you can get is called Behind the Dark Veil. That's affordable and that's a really good one. But the Sleeping Beauty one and two, it's like three or 400 bucks. Thanks, Jackie. Oh, we, look what we stumbled on here. Yeah, we're, maybe we're gonna, very unusual for the Germans to have a picture. Okay, so we're gonna, when we find one, we're just gonna like really focus. So this is Edward. And Edward looks like he died young. Sadly, Hermina is missing. I'm not gonna, try, even though I'm German, is that German last name? Looks like it. So what I'm gonna ask you guys is if you come, you know, there's the postmortems are all over the place and half of them, I don't know if it's half or whatever, they're not really postmortems. People say they are. And I, I'll give you some more clues on how you can tell. But what I'm mostly fascinated with is the postmortems. Well, not the, like speaking of those pictures, those old pictures. If you guys see one where there's someone standing next to their family's gravestone, like Victorian picture, like, you know, some of my Mount Carmel's where I found those pictures. I'm looking for more of those because I will, I found another one that's really cool. And you may have seen it. And the woman is holding her husband's picture. That gravestone is still there as it was a hundred years ago. And I'm going to go there. and I'm going to do my like time machine where I'm going to walk up to her. So if you guys find any of those pictures where someone is standing next to the gravestone, send it to me and I will get you, you will get a free t-shirt. A Faces the Forgotten t-shirt. If and, and the, the the bottom line is check on find a grave first, see if you can locate the grave. Is the grave still there? That's kind of the whole I don't just want pictures of people standing by the graves. I am looking for something where we can, we can go to the grave today and it's the stone is still there. And most of the time, like we've just found one, Deb found it. And the woman, it's a sister, she's standing there next to the grave of her sister, but it's in England. Oh, thanks SG for the $5. Very cool, keep it up. So yeah, the postmortems are pretty cool. I've, I'm really surprised at the feedback. A lot of people like like those, so I will keep posting them. I'm just going to post the ones that I find. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's windy. Nothing I can do. I'll tell you what, you can help me because when I point the phone a certain way, it's going to be windy. So is it windy this direction? How's this? Because the wind's blowing. I am now pointed east. So is east good? Yes, you hear the wind. Okay, let's try this one. Kathy says it's windy. All right, how about that? Now, do you hear the wind or is it better or worse? How's that? No wind. Okay, so I will try. Oh, still windy? All right, here's, here's southeast. How's that? better Monica 10 bucks thanks yeah okay so southeast everybody's saying is pretty is better okay let me try one more thing this is southwest not to get too caught up in this but is this is this good better okay this is southwest well the wind okay so we'll try I'll try to keep the camera pointed southeast and southwest so 
the cell phone does really bad with the wind. My other equipment does really good in the wind, unless it's really windy. So I'll try to keep the camera point because I hate the, the noise on the cell phone. It's, it's a really annoying. It's not just wind, it's really brutal. I get it. Durwood, 10 bucks. Love that picture. I meant to ask you, who is that guy? It's not you, I know. Looks like my brother-in-law, actually. In a way, just kidding. Let's go this way. Okay, we're gonna point it this way. There's something I wanna show you, where is it? No, let's keep going this way. There's something I wanna show you. Okay, we're going southwest now. We're going right into the sun, so you'll know that's southwest. So yeah, I'll keep posting those pictures. Got a lot of them, but only the ones that I, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. I only post the ones I think are cool. You know, speaking of stones and, you know, we're looking at these, do you guys like the new gravestone? You know, the pictures are coming back. So let's just start by talking about that. Pictures are coming back, pictures on the gravestones. They were, you know, in Victorian times, 20s, 30s, especially Eastern Bloc countries and Italian. But now I'm seeing, you know, and I'm sure you would agree, you're seeing a lot of pictures, the new pictures. And one thing that I've seen a lot, especially in the last few years, are black granite, are the etchings of people's faces and scenery and all that. The laser pictures. You guys like that, I'm sure, right? And we're seeing more porcelain type, type ovals. People are, and they're doing them really big. It's really cool. Yes, pictures for me, I, that's, I, I don't know. The, the, that's the whole ball game. You gotta have a picture of the person. Like as we walk here, I don't know. You just, they're just names and they all look the same. But what I wanted to tell you is I have an opinion on that, that the etchings and the sandblasting and all the granite, there, I don't think it's good. And the reason I don't think it is good is because in a 50 years or 100 years from now, those pictures are gonna be washed away, even in granite. Now, a lot of you guys know I'm an architect. I know materials, I've gone to the quarries. I know how all these things react. But I have really good evidence if you go to my episode. Remember when the guy was etching the stone? Uh, at, let's see, I was St. Joseph Cemetery, it was a month ago, and he did that prep. Now, here's a good example, I'll just shine it down here. You see how this is, this is kind of a, uh, well, it's a little rougher. What we call is it's honed, H-O-N-E-D, honed, polished, that's polished, that's honed. It's a little rougher than honed. Honed is kind of what he was doing. And you see how you see how these have polished and honed. Now this person died 70 years ago. And you can start to see that it is, now you, it's harder to see because the lettering is really etched deep, okay? This is what we're talking about. It's really etched deep. But these sandblastings and these etchings, it's, it's literally a micro depth. And the granite does wear. And I'm gonna predict, I'm gonna tell you that 100 years from now, you're not gonna be able to see a lot of those faces and images and landscapes and seascapes. It's just my own opinion. And I would dissuade people from doing that. I might be wrong, but I am pretty sure I'm right. Look at this obelisk, guys, it's a beast. Mom passed, uh, Patty says mom passed 21. Her stone and stencil ship San Francisco won't get it for eight months. Yeah, it's like up to a year now for this stuff. 
Amanda, sunny and cold in Vancouver, Washington. Well, that is a beautiful place. But yeah, I can imagine it's even more. Gotta be pretty cold. Alright, so I'm pointing, trying to keep this camera pointed in these two directions. Yeah, Gypsy Major. The porcelains are my absolute favorite. Especially, my, my Carmel's in, in Bohemian National. I, I just, I will go back again and again like I have been. I just cannot get enough of those cemeteries. It's like a time machine, right? Yeah, this is mostly German. And I'll share with you at the end where I am at. Gotta love Chicago, the Windy City. You know why they call it the Windy City, don't you? Not because of the wind, it's because of the blowhard politics that still go on. Yeah, I wish I could do lives with my other camera. That would really be good, Super 4K. Woodland Cemetery in Dayton. The graveyard reminds yeah it is it's kind of like is that the one i did the anna hawk vault no that, i think it was calvary Cal oh that was one of the coolest cemeteries i saw calvary cemetery where i did that buried alive one i was just taking it was all hilly and beautiful so there was i missed it on the news so kentucky got whacked for anybody in kentucky or i really gosh i feel bad hope you're okay you guys heard about that, right? Really bad deal. Linda Ball, five bucks, thanks. With the funny face and the hard eyes. Leslie learned some German in school. I'm German and I still don't know my German. I was actually born in Wiesbaden on the Air Force Base. My dad was in the Air Force, born a US citizen. Came over when I was like three years old. That's all I knew was German. And then, where'd it go? I don't know. I know a little bit. V Gates. Guten Tag. Yeah, very sad about Kentucky. Debbie Butler says, "How's the wind here? I'm still kind of pointing it." Are you retired, Ron? No, I'm semi-retired. I own three companies, and I'm. Let's just say I'm an advisor. Three companies I started over 30 years, well, the big one I started over 30 years ago with a credit card in my three flat dining room. So I had like a month to get it going and if it didn't go, then I was going back to work for somebody. But it worked out. Hey, Reddy is here. Thanks, Reddy. Go check out Ready for History, R-H-E-T-T. Why? Some great stuff, especially if you like the Wild West, which is one of my favorite subjects. So right over here, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see, but at this, this cemetery is split in two by this bike path, walking trail. We'll, we'll go over there and check it out. There's a bridge over there. Used to be a railroad. And I wanna show you this building here because this is the receiving, I, I now I don't know for sure, but. I've seen this before. I'm guessing this was the receiving building for the coffins or the caskets. Kelly, thanks for the $5. Steve Williams, thank you also. And I wish I could get in there. But let's let's take a look at the outside. Now this is right beyond this here. The bike trail was the railroad bed. The big railroads coming through in the 19... 20s and 30s and just like Rose Hill Cemetery showed you that one with the elevator and they would have the horse and carriage out here and uh, they, the train would drop the coffin or the casket off thank you April for the five bucks and they would you know they they'd bring him here by train and this is like a pass-through building now What's interesting is, look at this, kind of like a hayloft, right? Look at this. So, and that's the level of the train. And you see that hook up there? I'll zoom in on it. Oh, wouldn't it be cool? See those windows up there? Oh, man. 
I want to get in there. See that hook? Well, that was probably a pulley system before. And that is, they would lower, I'm, I'm, I'm just speculating here. They would, I don't know why they, well, yeah, they would slide the coffin or casket through here, open those doors, hook it to that, and then lower it down. Trish, $50, what are you doing? You're crazy. And then the horse and carriage would be here. Well, back in the really old days, right? Late 1800s. And then they would take them by horse and buggy to the grave. At Queen of Heaven, you see there's five graves, cross section 15, okay. Have you ever done a walkthrough at Mount Glenwood in Thornton, Illinois? No, I have not. What's there besides, I know it's a cemetery, but is it like super cool? Now, what's over here? Oh, you know, you know what I see? It looks like bee, is that beehive? Hold on, sorry about the camera there, not paying attention. Is that, is that beekeeping? Right, that's what, I don't know. Is that beekeeping? What is that? Tell me if I'm wrong, that's kind of odd. Watch in the darkness says, yup. That is beekeeping. So they're having a little, little hobby going here. All right, let's cruise this way. I wanna, we're gonna cross over. Still a ways to go. Thanks, Mario 24. Thank you. It's very cool. Hi from Dublin, Ireland. Wait, no bees? It's bees, not pawpaw. What? Message retracted. Goodbye. Per perfect place for hives? Yeah. All right. Still, I got to point this. I'm going to try and angle and point this camera. How's the wind? How's the picture, Susanna? $5. Funny face. You guys like anybody beekeeping? You used to keep uh, Gypsy Meyer, is it? Gypsy Meyer. Gypsy Major used to keep bees. Hello from Michigan. Is it cold there too? It seems a little blurry. Yeah, well, we've got a good signal. Good old, you know, I don't know, maybe we need, need to wait another five years. I got a great signal here. I'm moving slow going smooth and the picture will come back it's just the streaming it's just the way it is Kathy says windy all right let me move the let me move it this way how's that is that better Kathy says I'm watching Kathy she says okay all right Kathy you tell me if I get out of line here Greg got stung a hundred times well, I got a, I got a old wives' tale that really works for you guys. Some of you may know, but if you get stung by a bee or a wasp, just take a regular penny, put it on the, on the bite, carry a little piece of tape, tape it on. Twenty minutes, that thing is gone, and it's the metal ally neutralizes. I'm telling you, it's worked over and over for me and my kids. It's, it works. If you get stung. Endless stones. You know what gets me? Look at all this. Just look at all these stones. Nobody is here. And they are all forgotten. Like I always say, once you get beyond three, four generations, once you get beyond that, it's, you don't see the flowers anymore. You don't see the visitors. And the only people that I've seen in this whole cemetery are, you know, just curiosity seekers or, you know, they're just, they're just looking. They're not here to visit anybody.
That's why I'm getting cremated. Absolutely. I'll tell you this. Somebody sent me, I forget who, another... Somebody sent me another picture of a mausoleum that was desecrated. And I got to tell you, I, I was before, I was like, I'm going to be in a mausoleum because I don't want to be underground and this and that and the other. And it just, it looks so cool or it seems so cool, but I will not be in a mausoleum because at the end of the day, unless you're at Queen of Heaven Community Mausoleum, it's going to get vandalized. There's a good chance your bones are going to get thrown around. Isn't that sickening? But it's true. So I'm kind of back to the old traditional way. Amanda says, no mausoleums for me. Cremation. Cremation is the way to go. Or composting. Or the natural. You know, I think I'm like in the natural burial. That's what I want to do. I told you that. If I moved to Arizona, just put me out in the desert. Let the birds pick me away. I don't see the stars at night. I mean, I don't know. I've talked about this before. What if the soul, the soul stays with the body for a few hours? You know, it's ridiculous. Uh, but just the thought of being put in there. I've, you know, I've, I told you I saw a real cremation and the fire door was open. Opened for like 20 seconds. I won't tell you where, but it was a East Middle East, I think it was India, Indian woman. And I saw the glowing rib cage, molten lava looked like, and the skull. And she was about two thirds done, I guess. Holy cow, that freaked me out. That was like 10 years ago. Glory will be a queen of heaven. That's probably one of the best cemeteries. Windy, windy, Paula says. I know, I'm trying to... All right, how's this angle? Yeah, the wind is picking up now again. It's, just nothing. it's changing directions. Let's try this way. God, the wind drives me crazy. Shireen's being cremated. People make jewelry out. Yeah, Paper Moon, Pepper, uh, Pepper Moon has a good point. You can have your ashes put in a locket. I've seen that. You can carry your loved one around, right? Your family has a crematoria. Quibot. Led Zeppelin is being cremated. It's one of my favorite bands, by the way. It's a windy day here, sorry. How's this angle? How are we doing right now with the wind? I'll point it this way and we'll just kind of do this. Wind okay? Better. Paula says, okay, we'll go with it. Yeah, donate your body to Kathy. I like that. And then, then get cremated, right? Absolutely. I got another question for you guys. I don't know why I'm thinking of it, but you know, I know why. Last night I was watching TV. And by the way, YouTube is ahead. YouTube is way ahead. Do you, do you watch? I watch Discovery and ID channel. I love to watch the crime. And the commercials are just, I have to turn it off. Like I have to mute it at least. It's just these ridiculous commercials. But the stuff on Discovery, they're like copying YouTube, you know, streaming, streaming. But the shows that they're putting out, are you kidding me? Guys. My 100, my 1,000 pound life. Like, what is going on in this world? Like, and, and it flashed last night, it flashed a picture of this poor woman who was like a thousand pounds and she's like blobbing around in the swimming pool I don't, and they're pulling her around. And I said to myself, you know, Dr. Pimple Popper, and there was a show with people with their their toes and the, the pus and all this weird stuff and it's like who is watching that i know you guys aren't for the most part but there must be people watching that 
and it made me think of it made me think of remember in the 1930s that show called freaks and it had the pinhead and the you know the dwarfs and it was a movie you know and it's actually a cult film a cult a cult film and i started, i said to myself makes it okay it's like am I off base here but like what's worse like who are these people watching this stuff I, I don't know I saw it sure that. yeah 1932 let's up it was a movie called freaks it's a cult classic oh gosh it was Todd Browning's or something Todd Browning's 1932 and you can see it on YouTube. You can buy it on YouTube, I guess. Yeah, a thousand pound sisters, right? But anyway, I think I think it's kind of funny and ironic that you, I, I feel like YouTube is ahead of everybody, and Discovery, and even some of the the bigger cha you know channels on TV. Chan they're they're like streaming. You know, buy the streaming. Watch what you want. That's what YouTube. It's just everybody's a copycat. I think TV is doomed ultimately. I think it's all gonna go, you know, like YouTube. That much. I used to have the books of freaks. Yeah, I'm sure there's some books. They are. It is interesting. I, 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 I can't say that I don't. You know, I didn't look at that stuff. It is, it is intriguing. Yeah, cable, they're all trying to copy YouTube, right? Oh, cable, all that stuff, it's just a piracy junk. Then you have to buy all the other channels. You can't, you know, you get the plan and then they, they're like, you gotta, to watch what you want, you gotta pay all this extra money, it's a joke. $15 on YouTube, you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want, no commercials. But if you do that, you gotta watch these commercials. And um, guys, sorry to go off on this, but the commercials, oh my God. I'd rather go back, watch the corny commercials. In the old days, it's like garbage. All right, we're on. All right, I was telling you about that railroad bed. This is, this was, I. this has to have been a railroad bed now a bike path and it bisects the cemetery we're gonna go to the other side of the cemetery here I'm gonna cross over let's go this way guys rant away that's how I feel yeah that's awesome thank God the Medicare commercials are finally over oh god I'll tell you what, not only Medicare, how about the commercials that are going on? I don't know, maybe it's me, but they're so phony. It's like these phony people riding, you know, got the guy in a kayak with a smile. And it's like, I don't wanna, come on. You're insulting my intelligence. That's just fake, phony. Can't watch it, I just mute it. And the other thing that drives me nuts is they turn the volume up. YouTube doesn't do that, like I don't think on their commercials. That's driven me, that drives me, that's been driving me crazy for day. I don't know how long. Commercial comes on, the volume goes up 20%. Then you have to turn it down or mute it or listen to it. Anyway, enough on that. Enough on that. Let's talk about cemeteries. Relax, Ron. Yeah, I was getting, I get fired up. Sharon Dame agrees. Scams all over the place. Twitchy Bear. Hey, Twitchy Bear, what's going on? Trish mutes. Do you know I bought a system that automatically mutes? But then I, it was so complicated to hook up. I'm an architect. It's like, what do you send me here? All right, enough on that. Enough on that. Pam. Earwax commercials. <laughs> oh, did I get you guys on a subject, huh? <laughs> Oh, the wind has died down. We're in a section here now, a little cozy section. Let's hang out here for a little while. 
The scam baiting community, that's right. I hate TV actually. And I don't watch the news anymore. That's probably why I didn't hear about, you know what I call it? I call it the bad news. The news, you know, this is the five o'clock network news. Aside from the politic BS, whichever side you're on, it's just, it's just horrible what they say and do to people. But it's just, it's, I call it the bad news. Murders, I mean, come on. It's just endless. Oh, look at this, I found some, look at the, up here, there looks like some uh, excavation or something. Let's go check that out. You never know what you're gonna find as you amble along in this cemetery. Just imagine what it costs. All these people had all these stones. David, thank you, 20 bucks. $20 from David N. Where are you from, buddy? Tommy the Cat, yeah. Well, Tommy the Cat plays guitar. You should just play your guitar. You should send us a little clip here. Nowadays, TV already says you suffer from, you just suffer from your commercial. It's true. Something happened here, guys. Something really bad happened here. We just don't know what what this is all about. Looks like there's some uh, some stones. Holy cow. Everything's been thrown around here. I wonder what the deal is. Uh, let's take a look. This looks like uh, some kind of slab here. What do you suppose happened here, guys? With some glass. Look at that. That almost looks like a cornerstone or something. You know, I'll bet they're just working on this temporarily. Yeah. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Is that Dawn? David. Sorry, David. Yeah, I think the tree fell. Yeah, nothing bad. They've got everything. See the wood? It's all temporary. Looks like they're working on it. That's cool. This cemetery's in really good shape. And those of you who have joined late, we are right in the area where I did a story last week. Um, one of these monuments of a woman I think she was 21 or something. She was killed in a laundromat explosion, a boiler explosion. I think it was the 1920s. You know what I did is I went to, I was curious to see the house because it showed her address where they lived. I think it was 1920. And I go to the neighborhood and the house, I looked on Google Earth and the house is still there. And it is just a crap neighborhood drug the whole the whole thing's going on. i was trying to be very diplomatic i just said people roaming around but what i meant to say was this place is so sad it's a dump a, a drug infested drug dealers and uh, all kinds of nefarious people and destroyed i mean you could imagine back in the 1920s what it was like there you'll see the episode and just it was class it was clean the people had pride and it's, it's a dump now it was so sad and then i came over here to tell her story it's not a long story but i have her picture a boiler explosion working in the laundry you know in those days they had these big laundries i guess where you guys know about this i don't where they would take the you know you send your i know diapers when i was little they send the diapers out is it the diaper man i don't know but anyway i guess you would send your clothes out to these big laundry laundry facilities and they probably had laundry trucks before you had your own washer and dryer and they, they'd had women like sweatshop dozens of women in these hot boiling vats of water who knows but big boiler, imagine, imagine being there and the boiler explodes, shrapnel, violent. 
You know, we've only found one picture so far. Well, it's mostly German. Nellie, what's going on? Nellie is new. She enjoys reading the chats. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you with us. Warren, Warren Marr, thank you. Glad you liked the show. Ooh, I love these old trees. Look at that. That's spooky. Thank you, Lorraine. Ten bucks. Ten bucks from Lorraine. She's been around with us for a while. Yeah, those laundromats must have been very like a sweatshop, right? Like a sweatshop. Let's go this way. Now oh, the wind's picking up. I don't want to get too close to the expressway here. Got that white noise going on. They want to hear about my post-mortem book. Well, I can talk more about I talked a lot about that at the beginning. I can talk more about that. So I have several books. The one that I would recommend you guys get is Behind the Dark Veil. Or is it under? I can't remember the name of it. But that's, I think you can get it online. It's affordable. But some of the books I have are like three, four, five hundred bucks. So rather than... You know, like Sleeping Beauty 1, Sleeping Beauty 2 by the doctor. I'll try to share some of the more... Hey, Pearl, two bucks, thank you. I'll try to share some of the more interesting pictures that I find intriguing. And what's cool is it does tell some of the stories in there. And just to repeat myself, if you guys can find... Anybody finds a picture of a, a man or woman or child or family at the cemetery with the gravestone, if you can find it, find a grave, get me that picture, free t-shirt, Face of Forgotten, and then I will go there and I'll do a time time machine dissolve like I did on the Eastland. You know, I've done that in a few episodes, but yeah, postmortem's very interesting. People, and I'll tell you this, let's talk about it a little bit, okay. So I, I'm gonna just start by saying, two things. One, I'm not an expert. I know enough to be dangerous about it, but not an expert. And the other thing I'm going to say to preface is it's kind of like what I said on the Doc Holiday episode. You cannot believe everything you read, okay? You cannot believe everything you hear about that kind of history. You have to like take in all for consumption and balance it out and make decisions. You can't like listen to Caitlin the mortician or whatever her channel is nothing against her she's got a great channel i do like to see some of her stuff i don't watch youtube much i don't have time but i remember there was an epic people got on me they're like oh caitlin says caitlin says and that a, a corpse can't stand up well no a corpse can't stand up but i have I'll, you know the curtain boy one of my mount carmel episodes there's the parents that are holding the boy up he's standing he's dead behind a curtain and they say oh those you know the firemen the firemen is being held up by the contraption yeah those those stands those harnesses those hooks those whatever they were meant mainly as I understand or it just seems to make sense for you know with the exposure times of the cameras the exposure times were from 15 to 20 seconds to Daguerre, daguerreotypes they go minutes, if not 15 minutes, you have to hold still, impossible, right? So they would have those, so you, you know, you wouldn't see those behind your head, it would help you keep still from like swaying. Here comes the wind again, sorry. So, you know, and, and I'm gonna tell you that maybe some, my point on that is maybe there are some, I'm sure they use that for post-mortem sometimes, not the firemen, I mean, that's probably fake. But I can tell you, too, that all the Wild West, you know, the outlaws, the guys that were killed, Bloody Bill Anderson, the, oh, who's the one? I just saw one, gosh, ready, maybe you could help me. That guy that's propped in his, he's propped up, he, he is in his coffin, he's standing up, or Elmer McCurdy, or who's the mummy? There's a, there's a lot of them where, you know, rigor mortis sets in, your body's stiff, you can stand you up. So don't tell me that, you 
know, somebody left a comment earlier today and get all wound up and mad. Like I'm a complete idiot. It's like, no, you know, just because you read it somewhere doesn't make it fact. But the, like I was saying also on those post-mortem pictures, because of the exposure time, you always know that they're dead. Thank you, $5 from SG. Is that Lorraine? I think that might be Lorraine. That if you see blur, if they're blurred at all, it means they're alive and moving. And you'll see a lot of pictures, the mother, father, and the child, and you see the parents are a little bit blurry and the kid is like perfectly still or vice versa crystal clear because the dead aren't moving an inch or a millimeter. We found another picture. I think this is picture number two. Wow, very unusual. I don't have my flashlight, so I don't know what the inscription says. That's German. And sadly, there's got a chip from uh, probably a stone lawnmower right in the cheek, but we can see his likeness pretty good. I'll try to get in close on that. Yeah, I see the pictures and it's just so haunting. It's like the postmortems. 1882, I can see 1882. Now, when he was born, I think I see, it says 21. So I'm guessing he died in 1882, but that looks more recent than 1882. That looks like 1930s. Look at that tie. Maybe he was born in 1882, but oh, yeah, 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 here we go. 1916 is when he died. Well, I was 10 years off. You can maybe look him up. Find a grave. I wonder if he's on find a grave. So that's a little bit on post mortem pictures. There's lots more to talk about. Nice haircut, Cynthia says. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Nice haircut. Some good stones here. Yes, there are. Let's go over this way. Famous celebrities should have postmortem pics. Some of them do. About everybody's after Michael Jackson's picture. I've seen a couple episodes on that. Hey, Martha, thank you. Thank you for the, I think it's a buck, but I think it's, is that NZ 99 cents? I'm not, what's NZ, guys? I don't know what that is. Dead pet pictures. If you, I went to a couple pet cemeteries. Yeah, this is a beautiful Sunday walk today. It doesn't get much better if the wind would just die down. I mean, it's not real bad. Should we keep going a little more? I always feel like I want to go two hours, and then by the time an hour comes, I'm like, man, we've got a long time here. I was, well, it's more I run out of cemetery. Maybe I'll walk slower. It's about 50 degrees in Chicago. crisp, cool day. We're not going to get much more of this. Peggy says Stephen King's. Isn't he still alive? Stephen King's still alive. What about Pet Cemetery? All right, what do we got here? So there's some, we're kind of getting into a newer section. Let me take a look here. Let's head this way. Anne Rice just passed. Who's Anne Rice? I should probably know that. Do you have books on postmortem? Yeah, like I said, if you find a postmortem, email me. It's in the description box. No, you know what? Our, my email's not in the, I think it's in about. So you have to go to the about page. Email me that picture. Vampire Chronicles, okay. 
Oh yeah, Hugh Hefner is next to Marilyn Monroe. That's true. Somebody was asking me to do Marilyn Monroe and some others. I just don't want to do, I don't want to just get views. I mean, I'll get a lot of views, but it doesn't intrigue me. And it's, it's been done over and over on YouTube. I don't have anything to add. Anne Rice was an uh, author, was she? Oh, okay. An author. Look at that, melting away. He's next to her. I hear that the crypt that's above or next to Marilyn Monroe is up for sale for like four million bucks. Didn't they have an auction on that? What did that go for? Did they have an auction on that crypt next to Marilyn Monroe? Because the guy that owned it died and he got buried somewhere else for whatever reason. That's right. I do more of the forgotten. So my job, I like to mix it up though. I'll do some famous people if they intrigue me. Like if I'm like, then I'll do it. It's really kind of like, that's how I do all my stuff. I, and you know what, it, if it intrigues me, I, I, and I can't explain, it's just, you know, certain stuff intrigues me and certain stuff does not. But I know it when I see it. That's like the I don't, cenotaphs, so don't do the cenotaphs. I want to go where the, the person's buried. Like Salem, I don't want to go to Salem really because you don't know where, or Pocahontas, you don't know where they're buried. They just have like a memorial marker. Ann Rule, who worked for with Bundy. Ted Bundy. He's uh, cremated, right? After he got electrocuted? What happened to Ted Bundy? That's like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, he got cremated. And yes, man of the people. Yeah, I like, and, and see, tell some stories of families or self, tell some stories of forgotten people. But I like to mix it up. I don't like to get stuck. Like this week, how about Lizzie Borden? Yeah, I would do Lizzie Borden. That's kind of intriguing. It's just like even, it's over and over on YouTube. I don't have, I don't, I don't like, I like to do stuff that people haven't done. It's That's what intrigues me. Like even, do you guys watch that channel about scary, uh, what's the name of it? Grim Life Collective, I think it's called. Husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend. They're good to, I like to watch them at Halloween. But they were just there. They did the husband and wife, the Warrens. They did a great job on it, the Warrens. And they did, the, they went to Salem. But see, I'm just not intrigued to go to Salem to see they're just, they're stones. They're not there. The people that were hanged, they're not there. I mean, they're there somewhere, but they're not there. Yes, Kathy likes Grim Life too. My favorite was the one they, I like when they do universal picture stuff. He went to the spot where Dracula, they shot the opening scene to Dracula, and he'll do this a lot. I forget his name, but he will go and say, this is exactly where this was shot. And you can see that boulder and you can see, I love seeing that. Like he did the opening scene of the famous Boris Karloff Dracula movie when the carriage was going down the mountain. And, and he went to that spot and he, he pointed out, like he climbed a mountain to get to the camera angle. And anyway, yeah, I like, I like that channel. Yeah, Massachusetts is a cool place. I was, when I was in Vermont, it was just a little bit too long a drive with the amount of time I had. I had a couple, I have a couple stories. I had a couple stories planned there. Pilgrims and actually somebody that's really interesting. I don't want to say, cause I don't want someone else to do it. I want to wait. Oh, look at, there's like five hearts. Let's go see that. Yeah, that's Massachusetts, by the way. They're the ones who basically outlawed stone rubbing on gravestones, I always refer people when they say, oh, you they're telling me I should bring trace paper and do rubbings, and you know, I'm against that. You just shouldn't touch these things. But Massachusetts, it's against the law. And they have a whole protocol for that. I saved it and sent it to people. What do you suppose this is? Michael and his wife, Jessica, yeah. 
Yeah, they're, I like them. You know why I like them? Because they get, he's, especially him, they're, they're passionate about, I love people and they're passionate about what they do. And he's like really into it. You can just hear it in his voice. Now well, the inscriptions look like they're all washed away. Yeah, Massachusetts, probably like Vermont when I was in Vermont. Yeah, these could be babies. Do an episode on my cousin. Yeah, send me an email. Happy to uh, consider it. I think I got my Zoom on. Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. Well, I don't see, there's no inscriptions. There, it looks like on this side, there used to be inscriptions. And even with a flashlight, you know, this is one where if you were a historian, you could do a rubbing. And that's my view on rubbings. Like if one person does it for posterity or historical purposes, that's fine. But when people keep doing it, you're pushing the stone and then they crack and all that. There's a couple of other old stones. Yeah, Highgate Dawn, I've got had that on my list. I'm gonna come to UK possibly in June, depending on the whole COVID situation then. I'm gonna hit a lot of the big island. But Highgate, I'll probably stop there, but again, it's done over and over on YouTube. What can I add? I'll go there to see, I'll do a little episode. But I'm more after, oh, I've got some good stuff for London. I got some really good stuff. Darling, mother. So we have a darling mother and another darling mother. Shootler. Shootler. Or no, shooter. This one I can't read. Uh, the dates looks like 1875, 19, maybe 41 or 11. This one is not 1831 to 1915. Now, isn't that interesting? I've never seen two mothers buried together. I wonder, wonder what the deal is there. Right. Well, if one person, Pepper, yeah, if one person does the rubbing, fine. But, you know, these, uh, a lot of these old stones have stress fractures and they're just ready to go. And then you, when you do a rubbing, you have to push. You are pushing on the stone. And people keep doing that, it's gonna crack and... You know, it's kind of like at the museum. That's why they have stuff behind glass. If everybody touches this, that, or the other, you're gonna wear it away. You've seen the noses of the bronze or, you know, everybody rubs the nose, that's fine. But if everybody's doing that on these relics, they're just gonna wear away or just, that's the same old thing. People don't, people only care about themselves. That's why you see graffiti. When I was at Elvis's crypt, where before he went to Graceland, there was just graffiti all, no, people don't care. It's all about me. Let me etch my name in here. Or when I went to, I got a really interesting thing. You guys like carvings on stones and things. When I did my Arctic expeditions, which I did from the late 90s until 2014, 15, it was about 20 years. There's a place in Manitoba called Churchill and that's where all the biggest, the polar bears are. Not that they're not everywhere, there's a high concentration of polar bears. A lot of wildlife there, it's the Churchill River. And at the, where the Churchill River comes into Hudson Bay, just before on the other side, there's a place called Sloop Cove, S-L-O-O-P. Look it up, Google it. And carved into the, the smooth rocks are the names of many of the sailors from the 1700s, including Samuel Hearn, who was an explorer, among other things. Went down the copper mine. John, uh, Sir John Franklin was there even, in another, on the Copper Mine River. Anyway, that's my Franklin expedition work. But typical, my point being that, you know, you got these priceless carvings and they're beautiful, carved into the rock. 
uh, all these signatures of these men and the dates, and then some knucklehead has to come and like carve his name in from 2012. Oh, so that's, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It just drives me crazy. Yeah, 1700 Sloop Cove. If you like the Arctic nautical stuff, you know, Perry and Shackleton and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, can you imagine 1700s? Those carvings are they're done with probably uh, chisels and scraped by hand by these men in Sloop Cove. Sloop Cove is not Sloop Cove. The cove itself you can't see anymore because all the tides and the water height has all changed. I've got it on my uh, one of my blogs. I'll try to remember to put the link of it, but if you go, just Google it, if you like history. Well, let's see, let's head over, let's kind of make our way back this way. There's a lot of shipwrecks up there. A lot of men disappeared. Franklin expedition. That's what I spent 15 years working on that solo expeditions looking for the, the doomed ships. And there were 40 ships that went looking for him years later, and some of those men died. One of the ships, the HMS Investigator, up by Banks Island, if you look on Google Earth, you can see it to this day. I don't think you can see it on Google Earth, but the pilots flying those Arctic routes, you know, the, when you fly from, when you fly from the United States, like Vancouver, and say you want to go to Korea, South Korea, or the Philippines, which I did a few years ago, you fly right over it. The pilots would look down and say, oh, there's HMS, there's HMS investigator. There it is. A lot of cool stuff. Well, I love history, like you guys. Thanks, Andrea. Appreciate it. Well, let's cross back over the threshold. Yeah, Shackleton is some story, man. You know, that story is used by motivational speakers the last few decades. It's that guy was a true hero, brave man, went back for his men. He did not leave his men. When you read or see the movie, if you, it, it's one of those stories that just, you keep saying to yourself, how can it get any worse? And it does. Like when they were on the James Kennard, that little whale boat covered, and they were in the, uh, what sea was that? Waddle Sea? No. Drake's Passage. Oh. Thanks, Lynn, Two bu three bucks. If you look down there, that passage, it's the most violent ocean in the world. And they were like floating and they missed, I think it was Elephant Island, you know, and they just planned the currents. And if they missed that island or New South Georgia, was it Georgia? They're, go they're gone, they're castaways. Brilliant man, yeah, bike path. So down there is where that building we looked at. This, again, for those of you who have come late, this is the, this used to be the railroad. And right over there, where you see those telephone poles, where the fence meets, we looked at that building. That's where they would bring the uh, bodies, the caskets or coffins. And then they would bring them in there and they would lower them down for the, the carriages and horses to, do the procession. And they'd have the procession right here, right? And I'm sure, oh no, <laughs> and I was about to say, I'm sure it wasn't asphalt. It was probably cobblestone and look at this. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Whoa. All right. God, that guy scared the Jesus out of me. Well, that's what I get. I'm in my own world here. He was a nice guy, he waved. So look at this guys, this is the, this is, this can just imagine the clatter of the horse, the horses in the procession. 
right here it happened if there if if we were able to go to another time dimension at this moment at this place at this instant there was horses and carriages coming here Well, I wasn't. The guy came driving up behind me. But yeah, you're right. I should watch my backside. I'm usually more heads up. But man, that guy came fast. You know what's funny? When we were on that side of the bike path, there was no wind. And now we come back here and there's wind again. Look at the endless stones. Wow. Look at that. Just goes forever. Zeno, bad wind. Yeah, that's that's life in Chicago, man. Not getting around it. Yeah, that's cobblestone. Those are those cobblestone bricks. That's the original stuff. You go downtown Chicago, you still see that some of the alleys. In the eighteen hundreds, guys. You go to the East Coast, right, Peggy? You're gonna see a lot of that. Ron will, do, yeah, I'll tell you the cemetery when I get home tonight. I will put it in the description here. I think we hit some of this. Yeah, it's not a good neighborhood here, by the way, surrounding, but this place is pretty well fenced in. By the way, I'm going to be doing lives at 2 o'clock instead of 3 o'clock because a lot of the cemeteries close at 4, winter hours. And speaking of winter, I'm just not sure. You know, I told you I want to do one of these in the blizzard. I'm dying. If, if we get a blizzard, I'm just going live, guys. I don't know why. I just want to, like, I'm going to come here. We'll come to it. We'll walk a different section. There's plenty more. I don't know. I think it would be intriguing where you can only see like 20 feet and you have to like watch what comes out of the what comes out of the gloom an angel speaking of angel there's an angel right up here let's take a look yeah they tried to seal jim morrison's body figures don't it they tried to seal abraham lincoln i'm gonna go down there sometime do the holding crypt bring the drawing bring little jimmy Little Jimmy has been working. I got a good episode, so I went to Western Minnesota, practically North Dakota, on one day drive. I was planning to stay overnight, but then once I, I was so fired up after doing the episode successfully, I'm like, I'm just gonna drive home. And yeah, you can see the stones in a blizzard. You can't see the stones out there, but you can, you can see up close. I think it's part of the intrigue. It's like you're in a fog. It's like a little ship in the fog and you're looking out. What surprise is going to be up? I, I think it's more like the mystery of it where you can't see too far. But anyway, yeah, everybody wants to steal the body. So anyway, I was talking about, so I did the story of the six-year-old girl that was buried alive and absolutely this is verified. And I went to her grave. I made the seven and a half hour drive drive just for the story because I wanted to go and for you guys too and it was 18 degrees but little Jimmy got out we got little Jimmy going that's coming out Tuesday 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 this week and then Thursday the two kids that died where well, we have the post-mortem picture I don't know if that picture's online the Sprangers that might not be that might not be online. It's S P R A N G E R S. So we went to their grave. Yeah, this they were, they were on a sled, really sad. January, thin ice in the pond. Did I tell you guys that uh, I went? You know, speaking of that, I went through the ice once when I was in my late 20s. 
on a pond. I could have had the same fate. It was a close call. I was I was a golf nut. I, I still like to golf, but I was really into golf. It was one of those warm February or January days. 60 degrees, Indian summer day they call it, right? And all these golf balls were out on the ice and I kept going farther and farther. Look at all these free golf balls. Yeah, I didn't have money then. I was like, all oh, these free, you know, like Easter eggs out there. All right, Amy, I'll aim it this way. How's that? Tell me if the wind is better this way. And all of a sudden, no warning. And there is no warning. I went right through the ice up to my neck. And let me tell you, it takes your breath away. You can hardly breathe if you haven't been through it. And, you know, luckily I didn't panic. You, you have to not panic. But I did say to myself, I said, this could be it. This absolutely could be it. But I got my chest. And what you do if this happens, just keep, not that it's going to happen to any of you, but you kick your feet as hard as you can, and it does elevate your body up. It'll, it'll buy you a few inches out of the water with your arms lightly and the kicking keeps if you and I was a swimmer luckily I was a high school and college freestyle butterfly swimmer so I, I had a pretty strong kick and it lifted me partly out of the water I was able to get my chest on the ice but then the ice cracked through and then I went oh hey 20 bucks from our friend Britain I'm gonna see you tomorrow buddy Britton and I are gonna do a little mission tomorrow. But anyway, then I turned like 90 degrees and I did it again and I went through. I was like, oh man, running out of options. But on the third try, I found uh, it was solid enough. I kicked like as hard as I could. I got my chest on the ice. I spread myself out and I slithered out of there. And by the time I got to the car, by the time I got to the car, I was getting hypothermia. Like I had to strip down, I had the car heater on it. Luckily I was close to where I lived. It was in Hoffman Estates. It's great to see Britain here. Did you just, did you just join us? I know you're out today with your daughter. That's a very cool picture you sent to me, thank you. I think we're kind of circling back. We're getting close to the end, guys. There's a lot more to see, but I'm, I'm gonna wrap up pretty soon. Now, when we do the blizzard, I'm going to come here. Oh, $100 from WS. Holy cow, that's a world record. Thank you so much. Next time I'm going to go that uh, over here, back in that area in the blizzard. That's my mission. No, not the end yet. I'll, I'll, we'll go a little farther if you want. You want to keep going? It's been like um, hour and 15. I guess we could go a little longer if you guys want. Yeah, Kathleen, $100. Can you believe that? I think we saw that once before only. That's a world record. Thank you. Very cool. If you could email me your name, I would just like to know. Because you just, on here, it's just initials. I don't know who you are, but that is really. So this is kind of where we started, guys. Thank you, Melody's Coloring Cafe. That's pretty cool. Uh oh all right i don't want to touch too many buttons here so i'm gonna mosey we haven't been this way but i see what looks like might be a picture no maybe not it's something different well there's a lot to see here oh there's another one wait a minute here's another one of these hearts or did we see this already i don't know we were not here this is another yeah this is a foursome with the hearts. Maybe there will be an inscription. Maybe there will be. A, we didn't see this one, right? Thanks, Ruben. Glad to have you here. Glad you like it. I'm always worried if you guys are getting bored. Because I'm just blabbing away. Paul, I'll tell you when I'm finished. You can check later on. I'll put the cemetery it's a German cemetery in Chicago. Actually, I'll tell you when I'm getting to my car, when I wrap up. Well, only one of these is partially readable. That would be this one. 
Thanks, Leslie. I appreciate it. It's nice of you to say. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Very cool. Yeah, I don't want to be boring. So I'll just blabber away. Whatever you guys want to talk about. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Melody. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, KJ. Tina. You're going by so fast. Thanks, all you guys. It's pretty cool. Gang's all here. We got 684 people. Now look at this. Oh, that's a. It's not a picture. It's the. It's the finger pointing straight up. The index finger. That is. That means they're going to heaven, right? Six-year-old buried alive. Yeah, that comes. Brent on Tuesday. Tuesday, this Tuesday, 2 p.m. I release my videos at 2 p.m. Central Time. Usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. So this has four of them. Oh, the sun is setting. It's kind of cool, guys. Nothing on this side. A lot of Germans here. All mostly German names. Look at this corridor. It's kind of cool. Forest Home Cemetery in Chicago has these corridors, but they're lined with like concrete pavers. And they say that the horse and buggies would travel these in the days of old. Freemasons. Yeah, did you see my episode on the Freemasons, that mausoleum? I'll just say, Jack, it's the mausoleum with the butt print. You guys all remember the butt print? On the pew? <laughs> That's the thing we remember most from that episode. Why? I don't know. Because it's funny. Time for the vampires to wake up. That's right. Yeah, check it out. I can't I think it's called Acacia, Acacia Cemetery. I did it maybe six months ago. Something like that. I see. Bye, Sue. Is that Serenity's leaving us? All right. See you later, alligator. Anne Rice will keep them away. The ghost of Anne Rice. How's the picture, guys? Uh, Kadari. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce your name. C A R D Card and He. Card and He are. Love your Sunday walks, five bucks, thank you. Butt prints at Arcacia. That's what we do here. We talk about butt prints. We look for butt prints in the mausoleums and we found it at Arcacia. If you wanna find a butt print, go to Arcacia. And it was a big person too, let me tell you. That was kind of a spooky one. I was a little spooked out in there with the flashlight. All right, good. Good, good, the picture's good. Thanks, gang. Well, speaking of vampires and authors, I wanna see Mary Shelley. I will take you there. I will see Bram Stoker. I know, that, you know, when I say it's been over and over, done over and over, I'm not gonna do it. Those are, you know, if it really intrigues me, those are ones I will have to do. Look at the angel in the sunset. Isn't that kind of spooky? Ooh, yeah, I want to see that in the snowstorm. Hello from Slovenia. Oh, how cool is that? Hello, Beck. What time is it there? It's got to, let's like almost the other side of the world. It would be, I'm going to guess, it's probably midnight. Am I close? Video's perfect. Oh, that's great because this is. This is some great scenery. We're just gonna keep this going a little bit longer. I found another section. But again, no pictures. If you guys see a picture, say, go back. You haven't seen any pictures, have you? Rainy, keep the, the yeah, I will keep doing the images. I have a lot. I'm gonna do one every day or every other day for the next month, how's that? And I'll have, I'll have the story. We'll have the story going. Wooly Hermit, Baltimore. 
Ron will love the catacombs, yeah. Well, there's a pirate I'm gonna do in London, and it ain't Blackbeard. It ain't, it, it's not somebody you would think of, but it is, well, I'll tell you who it is, why not? You know Maynard, the guy who slew Blackbird, the guy that killed Blackbird? I wanna go to his tomb. And I found him on Find a Grave, not that that's a big deal, but Jack wants to see the witch's grave in Massachusetts. Yeah, witch's graves are cool, but you gotta be careful. Thanks, Dawn, for the five bucks. Here's some older stones. I am a Freemason, Jamie says. Hold secrets that people don't know. Become a Shriner. And we have a lot of Shriners here. One thing about the Shriners, I remember when I was younger, is they would, these old timers would ride around on these little trikes or little machines in circles and figure eights during parades. And they'd wear those hats. Yeah, General Patton, I, I, I will try to, I don't know if I'm gonna get to Belgium, but I, I thought I'd found his grave. I was in St. Gabriel, remember the Whammo? The guy, the founder of Whammo Toys? And it said General Patton was there, but then I went there and I'm like, oh, it's just a cenotaph. Big swing and a miss. So I did the guy from Whammo. But yeah, I should have known that. He's in Belgium. Belgium, wow, what a what an amazing. You know, he had his crazy flaws, you know, he's kind of a jerk, but he won the he was one of the guys. <laughs> you don't have him, you're not w winning World War II. You know, there were some coward generals that weren't pushing, they're too careful. And that's how you lose a battle and that's how you lose a war. You got to have guys like that with egos. Jeffrey Reed Five bucks, thank you. Can't wait for the for more Calvary in a blizzard. <laughs> right on. Here's Sophia Schroeder. Buried with his troops. Well, I'll tell you, I've got a, speaking of that, I've got a episode at, I'm gonna, of course, get back to Arlington. I did a lot at Arlington, a lot of looking, but it was before I started the channel. But one of the guys there that's really interesting, or, you know, speaking of buried with his troops, is Pershing, you know, World War I, General Pershing. And he is, and he has the same stone, nothing special. He's kind of off by himself a little bit, but he's with his men. And I have so much respect for that when I see that. I thought that was so cool. I'm gonna go see, I got a picture. Maybe I'll post if you guys want. I got a picture with Joe Bassalone. I don't know if you guys know who he was. He was a machine gunner. Oh man, he had a heck of a, that's so, so sad. He died on Iwo Jima. I think it was a mortar. He, he just kept going back to be with his men. So maybe I'll post a picture of him. It was from several years ago. Yeah, I think Patton was assassinated. Oh, wait till you hear my story on Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh, man, he was a creep. He was a creep of creeps. Here I'm a, I'm an aviator. I should be worshiping Charles Lindbergh, no way. That guy was a creep. I'm gonna tell you the story that a book came out last year. You can look ahead on it, but I'm gonna tell you a story why there's a good chance he killed his own son, Charles Lindbergh, that creep. Do you know that little boy, that little boy, Charles Lindbergh, Charles Jr.? I think it's Charles Jr. Jr. That little boy had rickets. And his father, the one part I'll tell you of my episode is when Will Rogers, they were friends with Will Rogers, he'd come over with his wife, the Lindberghs. And the little boy, you know, rickets is a bone problem, you know, curled toes and deformities. And the kid, the kid had some deformities. and. Charles Lindbergh was like a Nazi. He loved Hitler, so he and he believed in eugenics. And Will Rogers wrote in his article, he said, yeah, when they were over there, they watched Charles, Charles and Charles Jr. And every time the little boy would get up to run across the room, Lindbergh would like reach for a pillow, couch pillow and like whip it at him and knock him down like a bowling pin, like at the carnival. 
and knocked the boy down. And finally the boy had enough and he, he learned when he got up, he, he would start walking and he would, he would sit down in his little, his little rump. What a jerk. I mean, there's so much more bad stuff I'm gonna tell you about Charles Lindbergh, about his child. Not, you know, everybody knows he was a philanderer. He had five kids, three families uh, in Munich. He, you know, Nazi supporter, anti-Jew, anti-Semite, that just go on and on. Anyway, enough on Charles Lindbergh. But I just wanted to tell you that. Lindbergh could have been a double agent, who knows? He was a crumb bum. That's what my grandpa used to say. Oh, he's a crumb bum. Now there's a, there's a term from the past. Uh, how about terms from the past when we were little? My dad used to, like, what do they call the refrigerator guys in those days? Anybody know, everybody remember? Now you gotta be an old, old fart like me or you gotta be in your 70s. What do they call a refrigerator back in the old days? Icebox, very good. And what do they call a dresser where you put your clothes in your bedroom? They had a name for that. You know what that is? What's that? Okay, we got icebox. No, not chest, not bureau, not the bureau. No, no. Well, they called it that too. Wardrobe, hutch. No, keep going. Well, my parents called it a shift robe. Why? I don't know. They called it a shift robe. And what's the other one when we were little? I grew up in a Polish, Swedish, Norwegian, German family. They call it a shift robe. Am I the only person? Am I the only person where they call it a shift robe? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Maybe it was a Polish thing. My grandma was Polish. She had all these weird sayings. What else? What's oh there was a Shift robe. Oh, Tom's. Tom, there's somebody. Very French. Yeah, maybe it was a French term. I got no French in me. Oh, there was something else. Icebox, shift robe. Oh, um, and somebody asked me this, and I was the only one to answer this, and they were like, unbelievable. What did you call the Ottoman in those days? What did you call the Ottoman? Come on, guys. What did you call an Ottoman? I'm gonna wait. Footstool, no. Ottoman. Hassock, carry, right, Deb, yeah. Right, Hassock. Like, when do you hear that? When do you hear that, the Hassock? We had a red Hassock. That's right, did we see this one? They all look the same. Oh, we're in a different part of the seven. The Hassock, right. The Hassock. And then one more, one more. Um, gosh, there was one more I was going to ask you guys. I'll think of it. The Bubbler. Ah, I know. We're old farts. Sorry, Deb. We are old farts. <laughs> but we think young. So we're young. A bubbler, is that what they called it? The fountain? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, so there's two words that my grandpa used to say, and this is my memory. My grandpa would come to all, every one of my Little League games. He used the word, two words. Um, one was swell, remember? Oh, that's swell. Oh, that's so swell. And the other word, what was the other word they used back then like that? Instead of saying cool, what was the word they used? Instead of saying cool, it was not neat or cool. It was, I'm going to see if you guys can remind me. Not neato, not slick, not groovy. That was the 60s. Let's go back to the 1940s. Something was neat. No, not nifty, not groovy, not far out. 
Oh, you guys are gonna go nuts when I tell you, because I'm not fresh. Yeah, fresh, swell. Yeah, we talked about swell. But there's another word. You still hear it once in a while. No, not keen. Brenda, thanks for the five bucks. Cats meow, rock on. No, and it's funny, I can't think. I forgot it. I'm like blabbing so much. I'll think of it before we go. Oh, what was it? You see it in the old movies. You guys watch, of course, I love Twilight Zone. Do you like Twilight Zone? And the other, the other predecessor to that, or that went with that, was One Step Beyond, I think it was. And you'll hear it, you'll hear it in there. They talk, swell, yeah, we talked about swell. But there's one other one they would all, the old timers would always say, when they thought something was cool. Not peachy. No, not Outer Limits, it's called, the Outer Limits too. And of course, Night Gallery. But there's one call, you can see all of them on YouTube, by the way, for free, called Lost Help, no. Yeah, Twilight Zone's great. It's called One Step Beyond. Go look on YouTube. They're, the, the difference between, and Rod Serling and this guy, they knew each other. And the only difference was Rod Serling was into science fiction. That's where Twilight Zone really took off. This guy was the predecessor or at the same time, but he, they didn't, they were into premonition. They were into mostly like premonition kind of stuff. Cool cat, hoodwinked, keen. Keen is more like 50s, 50s, I think. Groovy, 60s. Gosh, why can't it just swell? But good Lord, I'm going to have to post it if I can't remember. It was like on the tip of my tongue. And no, not Jim Dandy. I mean, they said all those things. But it's not the one I'm thinking of. Not the one I'm thinking of. Cream of the crop. Peachy Keen, Lorraine says, on the scene. Cat's meow, no. Why can't I think of it? It's driving me crazy. They say it in the movies. They say it in the movies a lot, and it's not swell, it's, it's another one. Come on, guys. All right, I'll, when I think of it, I'll, I'll post something. Hunky Dory, no, it's not the one I'm thinking of. And when I, when I tell you, you're gonna be like, oh my God. Absolutely. Even the, like the 50s, they would say it. But it's more like the 30s and 40s. My grandpa used to say it all the time. Righty O, the most. Nifty. Hey, that's getting warmer. Nifty is getting warmer. Wowzer? No. I haven't seen it yet. Nobody's hit it at Aces. That's a good one. Cat Pajamas. I've never heard that one. Neato. Yeah. Gosh, I'm not seeing it. Gee whiz. I don't know. I can't. I'm so like reading your stuff. I'm trying to remember. Slick. That's a gas. Okie dokie. <laughs> Spiffy. Jiffy was in a hurry. Spiffy was another one. Wow, it was not swell. It was, gosh, it's driving me crazy. You know how it is. Cool beans, stone, no. I'm going to lose sleep over this too. I swear I will post it. I'll probably think of it on the way home. You know what I will do? I will put it at the top of the description box of this live stream later when I think of it. And that's how you can find it. And it's, it's like swell, but it's something else. They used to say a lot. Maybe it was swell. No, there was, there was one other one. Anyway. Peachy Keen. Okay, guys. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. That's what I... When it was bedtime for my kids, that's what I would say. It is time. It is time to wrap the show up. I'm glad you guys were hanging out with me for so long. This was our longest live stream, I think. And I think, you know, with the weather, 
and just big enough place to just wander. It was a pretty cool conversation. It's fun chatting with you guys. Um, hopefully you see some of you tonight on the premiere at 8 p.m. Central. The Three Little Girls, uh, sad story in Ingleside, California, when I was out there. I shot like six ep episodes out there. Anyway, catch you guys later. I'm going to rock out of here and enjoy this beautiful evening. And have a great Sunday night and have a great week ahead. I'm heading to California Wednesday for an overnight on this absolute episode I have to do. Just found it. No one's found it. I'm going to do it. You guys are going to love it. And I can't give you any hints. All right. So catch you later. All right. Great time. It was fun hanging out.